Well, hey folks, it's your old pal, King Waspinator. Welcome back to Total Party Skills. Be sure to hit like and subscribe. Um, sold a copy of Ghost of the Shadow Zone this morning, uh, which is sort of my uh, answer uh, to World of Darkness using the Total Party system. It's set in the 70s. It's a horror, occult game. Uh, primarily framed out as if you're going to be playing ghosts, although there's also rules in here for playing mortal characters who are part of a couple different fictional international occult organizations. And uh, it, of the games I've put out, it's it's the most uh, open-ended to interpretation in terms of what kind of adventures and other campaigns and stories you could tell with it. And so far with the source books I've made for it, uh, I've been kind of trying to do the th thing I like when you get a source book that completely reframes the game and almost turns it into a different game. Uh, the first one I put out, of course, is Secrets of the Lesbian Illuminati, which uh, basically takes the Lesbian Illuminati occult faction and spins a whole kind of collegiate setting around them uh, for player characters that you can start off entirely unattached from the primary Ghost of the Shadow Zone game. The second one I've done is The Young and the Restless Dead. Uh, arguably, this is more attached to the, you know, the char player character options from the main rulebook, uh, since you know it's the sort of thing that ghost characters can stumble across because of the, their intangible nature. Um, my, my reasoning is that you know ghosts have a much easier time of discovering some of the secret weirdness that's going on behind the scenes that average living people don't realize that the you know, folks in charge of their world are, are up to. Uh, this one is set in Hollywood. Um, there's a couple different things going on. There's, there's a bit of like the, the beginnings of a supernatural war for control of Hollywood going on and behind the scenes. Uh, there's a faction of vampires uh, with rules for playing vampires in, in 20th century times um, that are descended from Zorro, Don Viego, or whatever the hell his name was. Um, and he's a character... He's still around. He's sort of like the Dracula of, of Southern California. And uh, it's written that like he's had actually had a heavy hand in the early investment and creation and, and of bringing a movie industry into California. And he actually played himself after taking like on a new name uh, in some of the original Zorro movies. Uh, another character is, you know, a, a pun on Olivia de Havilland. Um, where she is actually a, a mummy from ancient Egypt who was originally a, a necromancer witch who got, uh, you know, entombed for thousands of years until she was found and dug out and came back to life. And uh, now she is also embedded in the Hollywood system and has uh, created the Dead Actors Guild, where basically, you know, um, playing on the idea of, you know, just the vaingloriness of, of you know, Hollywood celebrities, uh, there's a kind of a secret cabal of them who've allowed themselves to be turned into living mummies so that they can extend, you know, uh, the, the, the appearance of their youth for several more decades before they start to become decrepit. Um, there's a, uh, you know, some stuff on, on the abuse that Hollywood has on actors where there's a kind of a smaller group of the Dead Actors Guild who are some of the younger up and coming actors and actresses who've been tricked. And instead of being turned into like, you know, the undead, they were just killed and then their bodies were given to the souls of like satanic bankers and businessmen who had, uh, you know, done good service for Satan and all that kind of stuff and are being rewarded by getting to live a second life as a, as a young up and coming actor who suddenly is having all sorts of good luck in casting and all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's also, because of the time period, uh, there's the, uh, uh, kind of a martial arts Bruce Lee faction from Hong Kong called the Wirefighters Union. Uh, they, they're, they're the smallest faction, but, uh, potentially kind of an X factor in how things are going to go. I also describe one of the regional cells for the global voodoo Kings in here called the Pacific voodoo Kings, uh, you know, goes into a little bit more detail about the Nubian brotherhood and they're kind of placed there as vampire hunters who've been infiltrating Hollywood by either becoming, you know, technical service personnel or also being actors and performers in various black exploitation kind of movies just so that they can kind of scout out and figure out who the various living dead and uh, vampires that are there. Uh, it's, it's, it's not structured out like an adventure. It's, it's just a bunch of resources to use to kind of come up with what you'd like to do with that, uh, which is kind of the gist of most of my games. They, 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 they tend to be open-ended in interpretation. A lot of them will give you kind of an opening scenario. This less so, so it's kind of up to you, like what you want people playing and how you want them interacting. 
And like I said, like an easy way into it is just the characters from the main Ghost of the Shadow Zone, Ghosts, uh, could stumble across some of the stuff going on, especially since, you know, the, the younger actors and actresses who've been tricked, they're, they're suddenly finding themselves dead in, in the afterlife and with no clue as to what the fuck's really going on. So that might be a good avenue for people. So anyway, stay waspinated. Have a good one. Hit like and subscribe. Do all the shit. Get the fuck out of here.